Yep, uh, I think we're heading towards the end of our journey. I made this pot up uh, last night and uh, it's it's really, really heavy. Almost feels almost, well, not quite like lead, but you know, it feels really heavy. It's almost like uh, you've taken paraffin candle wax mixed it with water and somehow the paraffin candle wax has um, absorbed the water, even though it's a repulsive um, compound. So we've got a repulsive compound here that somehow seems to, yeah, so very strange. I remember um, they, they say that um, the, the, the salt fragment index or cation and anion exchange capacity of peat is proportional to its lignin content, but peat which is derived from sphagnum, and, and sphagnum contains no lignin, so uh, it's very strange how peat can have a lignin content when it's derived from something that contains no lignin. Uh, it's quite a conundrum uh, <laughs> um, to resolve. If you can resolve that conundrum, well, please send, <laughs> send me a postcard with your name and address on it. I, mean, I think we've got a winner. <laughs> so I'm just thinking, have we found out where the cation and anion exchange capacity actually uh, resides? Um, because uh, I remember that I used to say that Colin Clayton used to analyse all the peats around the world, but they never said for what he was analysing the peat, you know? What was it in the peat that he was doing all these tests on, on it for, so. So, uh, and they also said that uh, when Colin Clayton went out to Dianeer country, over in um, North Carolina, there, they said it was all charcoal. The soil was just basically charcoal, that's what he said. So, w whether he was right or not, I don't know, but um, I do know that charcoal has got a very inter interesting property that it can pull the pH in from both ends. So if you put acid on charcoal, it will become, it will want to, tend towards neutral and if you put an alkali on it it'll want to tend the other way towards neutral so charcoal likes to be uh, neutral it, it likes to pull the pH in from both ends to try and try and be neutral if it can it tries to neutralize um, acids and tries to neutralize bases basically an unusual property that not many other compounds have so um, anyway I was just thinking in this very as I said <laughs> yeah <coughs> It should always be ready to be surprised in the world, in the strange world of carnivorous plants. Because, yeah, this is very strange. It shouldn't be this heavy. So, um, anyway, so I put some nutrients in here, and um, we'll see what happens after. It's supposed to be raining um, Monday or Tuesday, so we'll see what happens. I might put a plant in this after that and see what happens. Might get a pleasant surprise, but. Um, yeah, I think I've, I've got an idea now where the um, the uh, cation and anion exchange capacity sites actually reside. Well, it's not, um, you know, with, with the uh, the most bushfire prone um, continent on the planet with the most CPs, including the, the, the most robust, Drosa gigantea. Since charcoal can pull in um, pH from both ends, it all has, also has the ability to donate, being carbon, four bonds or or take away four bonds basically you know you donate and um, what's the opposite word I can't remember now but anyway um, so that's how you can make all these com these, these carbon compounds so I just think if, if there's something similar so um, that's where the cation and anion exchange capacity actually resides in things like peat and peat related uh, humuses so um, it's just something I said it's just it's just it's just too heavy, you know what I mean? You make it up and um, it's supposed to be water repellent and um, apparently it's not. And I'm thinking, hang on, I think I, I think I, I think I understand what's going on now. So we'll have to see. Anyway, we'll see what happens after the rain. I'll put some plants in it and we'll see if they grow. If they grow, well, it's going to be very unusual because um, well, I set this up to uh, 44 grams to litre or one and one third seawater, which is uh, it should be enough to kill any plant overnight, basically. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. So, um, come Wednesday, Thursday next week, I might be talking a different story. I don't know. But anyway, um, I just thought I'd let you know. And uh, just something out, out, out of the blue, out of the unusual, I thought, um, yeah. I said, well, once you're within the rim... Uh, 
science tends to favour when you're inside the crater of the promised land sort of thing. So uh, once, once we're inside the crater of the promised land, um, I uh, <laughs> expect things to be totally different within the crater. Um, things will be a lot greener in the crater because um, isn't that the thing that with the swamps that we have? Um, uh, when you uh, they talk about, you know, nitrogen being the master element of all plant uh, you know, biology sort of thing and if you're deficient in nitrogen you should be you know suffering uh, not being able to make chlorophyll sort of thing and uh, be going yellow and maybe white and um, so on and so forth and you turn the corner in these bogs and it's green as far as the eye can see sort of thing you know it's green as far as the eye can see and um, it's not just the carnivorous plants it's all the plants in the bogs you know are pretty much green this sort of thing you're thinking well you know is this just a, a bullshit theory at odds with the scientific method I, mean, <laughs> I think we may have found why it's bullshit you know uh, this shouldn't be happening if it wasn't bullshit sort of thing so um, yeah <laughs> as I said it's very heavy it's almost feel like uh, if it was twice as heavy I would say it was lead but you know it's pretty heavy you know for that size you know so uh, yeah basically about 600 mils so uh, 600 cubic centimeters basically and it's just it's too heavy for that volume it just shouldn't be that heavy it's almost like it's absorb all the moisture sort of thing and um, you know it's holding all that water I'm thinking well if it can hold water maybe it's actually the source of the cation and anion exchange capacity or, or salt fragments uh, index sort of thing you know cations and anions are basically salt fragments in quotes so anyway just an idea we'll find out if it's true or not but uh, i think we're getting very rapidly and very quickly to the end of our journey uh with this discovery basically it shouldn't be like this but uh, apparently it is so <laughs> we'll see how we how it develops. Anyway, over and out. See you.